So uh, this one's another going to be another SmartOS video. Um, as I dig more into SmartOS, I'm using it for a couple weeks now. It is fantastic. Uh, and I figured we could to show how to build packages, package source, for SmartOS on SmartOS. So thankfully, uh, facilities exist to do this very, very easily. So this is going to be the quick rundown. We're not going to go into any of the package source uh, configuration, etc. So this is just, you know, uh, as quick and simple as possible. Thankfully, uh, provided with SmartOS, or in the main SmartOS image repository, is a zone image for package build. So that's a, a SmartOS brand, so a joint brand zone. Let's look at, uh, look at the configuration um, to run this zone. Again, Brand is the joint as joint. Now I give it a alias host name. I'm giving it a bunch of memory, um, probably more than I can realistically fit on here. I need to get a, a bigger machine for my my smart OS use. Again, this is some tiny old Dell i5 with eight gigs of memory, 120 gigs of uh, storage, and I'm doing LZ4 compression just because I don't know for fun. Uh, and we give it a nick, although don't necessarily need that, right? So you're going to end up with a, a package coming out of this. Uh, and uh, there's other ways to transfer that around your hypervised system than to uh, do it over the network. We're going to do it over the network because. So let's create the VM here. And this is super simple, super easy uh, to get some packages built. Now, I will say the the package repository for uh, pre-built packages is extensive, right? I haven't, I don't think I found too much in the way there that isn't there. One thing I did find that wasn't there were modern GCCs, right? So GCC six, for instance. List. So we are up and running. I'm gonna log in. It's not what I wanted to look at, uh, but no matter. So we have uh, the data directory. In here we have package build and package source, you know, a variety of directories here as part of the build process. Not very descriptive. I'm trying to keep this brief. I want to see if we can get through this in under 10 minutes. Uh, the interesting thing here is package source. So this comes out of Uh, this is pulled down off Git. We have a branch here, the 2017 Q1. I don't know if Q2 is out, but we'll stick with Q1 here. And this is our package source uh, directory here. So go to my, my favorite here. And there we have the package source build. Let's go down here under package build. These are uh, build tools here. So we have configurations, and we have a configuration per I guess release of package source for this. So, so we have the 2017 Q1, uh, and then each of the architectures. So i386 multi-arch and x86-64. Now there's a script uh, run sandbox, which will create a chroot or chroot. I don't know. Leave a comment on the correct correct pronunciation of chroot. Um, and we're going to give it that tag, Q1. And this is going to then build us a change-rooted sandbox so that we're not going to impact uh, the overall system by building and installing any package dependencies, anything we change in that build environment. So that's a pretty cool feature. So we're essentially, once this completes, we are up and running, up and running, ready to build packages. Uh, pretty simple, right? So yet another in the win column for SmartOS. Um, they really have taken great pains to make things simple, but not dumbed down, and I really like that. Uh, you know, like I said, I've been using it for a couple weeks now. It is fantastic. Uh, can't ha don't have enough good things to say about it. Is there a learning curve? Absolutely. Coming from a standard 
you know, Solaris background, things are a little different. Obviously, it's a hypervising operating system, so things are going to be a little bit different. So, since I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes, and I didn't count on this as going to, uh, you know, take a moment or two, so I'll try to fill a little bit of this time, uh, and extol some of the other virtues of SmartOS. In addition to this sort of thing being super convenient, um, the ability to run LX zones, absolutely a plus, right? So you can do all your Linux software. And as you see here, we have Linux tags for uh, uh, here in the package source or the package build uh, tags here. Joyant also provides uh, package source packages for Linux, I believe. Again, not 100% sure because you know, none of my Linux machines I'm using package source, but that's pretty cool, and also OS X. Uh, for the package I'm going to build, and this is going to be kind of the next video I'm going to do after this, so that's why I'm trying to keep this one as brief as possible. I'm going to get two out tonight. i got to go back to work tomorrow. Vacation is at a close. So I wanted to get a couple out tonight, uh, is SC, the spreadsheet calculator. So I think we'll build that as a package. I think that'll be a good example of uh, a building a package, and it should be pretty lightweight. And right? So that's 80s, 80s software. So, you know, the bootstrap has been placed into the Chirrut. Again, am I mispronouncing that? I found out, you know, years ago, obviously, but it was years after I started using it, Sudo. I was I was thinking it was Sudo for some bizarre reason. I was a teenager, so don't fault me too much. So we'll go over into the package source directory, and we'll see where is um, SC. Should be under Map. And we want to use the BSD make. See if there's any options here. Okay, no options. Let's, eh, we'll build it anyway. All it takes is a bmake package. And this is going to run. And how it's set up out of the box, it's going to go and install the binary packages uh, for dependencies, if at all possible. Right? So it'll build dependencies if you don't have uh, a binary package available. And what you're going to do with the packages, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later, is, is interesting. I'm going to investigate that a little bit more. Um, you know, this is just a single machine here, but if you have a whole set of machines, you might want local package repositories, etc. Um, but as it is, I'm just going to, you know, copy uh, this package over the virtual wire onto another uh, another zone. And this is moving along pretty quickly. Um, for what it's doing. I think, if I'm not mistaken, the default is it does eight make jobs, which is, is fine for a big machine, right? We only have four cores here. Um, let me see what my... Uh, see what's going on in that zone from the global zone. So you see we have a, a number of B makes here. And so we got GCC 4.9, which looks to be the stock uh, compiler for all of this, which is which is fine. Um, nothing wrong with that. Like I say, you, I had to pull this up and actually get into building these packages because I wanted GCC 6 um, for use to to build, say, things like SimH and ES40. You know, my my emulators to run VMS and other things. So we're done, pretty quick. Uh, let's build another since that was too quick. Um, let's see if there's any other interesting things here. We'll build a uh, Pearl Shell. Make sure it was the right thing I was thinking of. And we'll build this. And this is going to have to obviously go down and get Perl and some uh, Perl modules. And that will uh, sh should pick it up pretty quickly. And 
I think we're going to hit our time target here. But let's move these packages over to uh, another zone and fire them up. Now I have my own kind of thoughts on people, and I know why you have to do it, right? Because if you have dependency tracked package management, you need to put your Perl modules and say other sort of libraries in there. And that's fine for the, the system type stuff. Uh, for actual Perl development, you should be doing things through CPAN and Perl Brew. So you have a kind of a, a dedicated Perl. Don't use your system Perl. Um, and I guess that's now becoming more and more true for things like Python, uh, Ruby, or other kind of dynamic languages. So we now have our files here. Well, we get our, our gzip uh, tar. So let's copy those out. So we have all the packages here. Some of them are downloaded. Some are just what we built. And also do the Perl shell. So those are there. Let's go over to that zone and check them out. And my list is still up. So we got our packages. All in with package add. Let's see about running it. So there we go. Our spreadsheet calculator is in. Let's see if Perlstall is in. Well, that's not a good sign. Um, but no matter. Uh, again, why you probably should pull things in by CPAN. So, some going on with Perl Shell. But the process still uh, still applies. One thing to note, obviously, is that this is package list. So maybe some of the stuff that's in there might not be ideal on uh, Illumos. Uh, you can also use the uh, joint package source uh, binaries on things like OmniOS, for instance, and open, open Indiana. Well, let me stop this now because I, I think I've reached my time target trying to make a shorter video here so we can fit in another one after this. So uh, let me actually bring up SC because that's what it's going to be about. We're going to take a look at the spreadsheet calculator.